my dear brothers and sisters in Islam, all that I have said to you today is not something which is new to you. It is not something which you need to be told or the evidences have to be displayed in front of you. No single person sitting here today needs to be given a theoretical lecture about this topic. Do you know why? Because each and every one of you sitting here knows it by experience. He knows it through his own personal life. He has seen it, smelt it, tasted it, licked it. He doesn't need to be reminded by me or anyone else. Every single one of us sitting here today knows how we feel when we do a good deed. After a long tired day of fasting, our bodies are tired. We have become hungry. But spiritually inside of us, we are alive with Iman. After reading the Quran, and then we close the Mus'haf, can anything purchase that feeling of tranquility that you feel? After waking up for Fajr, you have given up your sleep. You might be physically a bit drowsy throughout the day, but wallahi your Iman is on an all-time high. Every one of us knows this for a fact. We have tasted it, experienced it. And the converse is also true. Anytime one of us commits a sin, and we all commit sins, we feel the distance that we have placed between us and Allah. We feel our hearts become hard. We feel the guilt. We ask ourselves, why did we do this? Was it really worth it? We notice that there is a change in our relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Ya ayyuhal insan, O mankind, ma gharraka bi rabbika al-kareem. What is there that has caused you to be deceived about your ever generous Lord? How can you be deceived? What can possibly change this reality that all of us know? The only way to attain tranquility is through the worship of Allah, is by turning to Allah, is by making Allah the ultimate goal and destination. We all know this. Then why is it that we turn away from this path? Why is it that this world can seduce us away from this path? O oh mankind, what is there that has caused you to be deceived about your Lord? Has not the time come, my dear brothers and sisters, for our hearts to become soft at the remembrance of Allah and at the Qur'an and at hearing about Allah and His Messenger? Has the time not come that our hearts turn to Allah and that we become better Muslims? My dear brothers and sisters, how many khutbas will it take? How many lectures must you be told? Don't you understand? Don't I understand? If I don't change now, if you don't change now, this is a plot from shaitan never to change. There is no tomorrow. Tomorrow never comes. Every day has another tomorrow. And the time will come when for you and me, there will be a day where there will be no tomorrow. If we keep on saying, tomorrow I'll start praying, tomorrow I'll be a better Muslim, this tomorrow will never arrive. My dear brothers and sisters, what do you need to convince us? What do we need to convince us? Don't you see what's happening in the Muslim Ummah? Are we blind to the reality of what is going on around us? Do you not notice that the majority of affairs that are occurring deal with us? Look at the news. 80% of the news deals with our ummah and what is happening to it. Has it ever occurred to us? Why? Why? Are we not believers of Allah? Are we not worshippers of Allah? Or are we? Or are we really and truly believers and worshippers of Allah? Allah says in the Quran that izza, honor and glory and power will always belong to Allah and to His Messenger and to the believers, the mu'minun. Therefore, it is not possible that the real mu'minun will ever be humiliated. It is not possible, my dear brothers and sisters, that permanently the situation will always be in our disfavor. Therefore, there is something wrong. We are not doing our job. We are not reaching the level of iman that is required of us. And that is why we have not reached the level of izzah and honor and glory that is promised to us as well. How can we ask Allah to do His part of the contract when we don't do our part? How can we ask Allah for help when we don't deserve that help? Do we not realize that this is a wake-up call for us? What is happening in the Muslim Ummah, Allah is doing it for our sake. Just like the child punishes the parent, not because he hates the child, but because he has to guide the child. He has to instruct him, don't do this again. This is a bad thing that you're doing. So too Allah says in the Quran, مَا يَفْعَلُ اللَّهُ بِعَذَابِكُمْ إِن شَكَرْتُمْ وَآمَنْتُمْ What will Allah gain? What will Allah gain by punishing you? If you believe and are thankful to Him. If, this is the if. 
what will Allah gain? But if you are thankful and have iman. In other words, if you don't have iman or you are not thankful, then Allah Azza wa Jal must show you the reality. My dear brothers and sisters, we simply don't have the luxury of living a carefree life. In fact, we never have such a luxury, no matter what the ummah is going through. But especially now, especially at this time, we simply can't be selfish. We can't think of my dunya, my money, my wealth. No, we must think of the ummah. Each and every one of us is responsible to do what we can for the ummah. It is my duty and your duty to be better Muslims, and that is the best way to revive the izzah that this ummah needs. That is the best way to get to the position that Allah has promised us. O oh, Muslims, ponder over this reality. Reflect over it. For the sake of your family and friends, for the sake of this Muslim ummah, for the sake of your dunya and akhirah, for the sake of your jannah and nar, for the sake of Allah Azza wa Jal, each and every one of us has to change. Each and every one of us must set goals to better himself. Now, not tomorrow. At this point in time, because there is no tomorrow. For ourselves, my dear brothers and sisters, for your own Jannah and Naad, what more do you want? Even if you're not going to change the Ummah, as one person, at least you will change yourself. At least you will guarantee, inshaAllah, that you will be saved from the fire of hell and go to Jannah, if you are fulfilling the part that Allah has told you to do. Therefore, what is there that has caused us to deviate from this path? My dear brothers and sisters, the time has come indeed. The time has come, as Allah says in the Quran, that our hearts soften. Our hearts become soft at the remembrance of Allah and not become hard like those of the people who came before us. O Muslims, ponder over what I have told you and ponder over the situation of the Muslim Ummah and ponder over your own selves and think, what am I doing here? What will I respond to Allah on the Day of Judgment? He has given me 40, 50, 60, 70 years. What have I done to show for that? And each and every one of us is responsible for ourselves. And then after you have pondered, after you have thought this all out, act. Take it into action and improve your lives for the better. With this insha'Allah, we will revive our honor and glory. We will become better, a better ummah and we will achieve this tranquility that is eternally besought of all of mankind. Al-Hasan al-Basri, a very famous student of the companion, he said, he said, seek happiness. Seek happiness in one of three things. In one of three things. Seek happiness in the recitation of the Quran and in dhikr of Allah Azza wa Jal and in the salah, in the prayer. If you wish to seek happiness, these are the three places you will find them in. And then he said, if you do not find happiness in these three matters, then know that the door to happiness has been shut for you. You will not find it anywhere else. The door to happiness has been closed. There is no other way to obtain the tranquility that you desire except through the worship of Allah Azza wa Jal. Another famous author or another famous ascetic of the early generations, he said, if only the kings and the princes, if they knew how we really and truly feel the tranquility that we have in our hearts, they would be fighting us with swords in order to obtain it from us. In other words, if they knew the treasure that we have, if they could really see it, instead of being illusioned, disillusioned by this world, then they would know that the real prize is the prize that we have of Iman and tranquility. Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah, the greatest scholar that this ummah has seen after the time of the early ancestors, the pious Salaf. He said, there is in this world, there is in this world a Jannah, a garden. The only way to obtain the Jannah of the hereafter is by entering the Jannah of this world. And he who does not enter the Jannah of this world will not enter the Jannah of the hereafter. And that Jannah is the worship of Allah This is the only way to obtain the real Jannah. To enter the Jannah of this world, the tranquility of this world. If we don't taste the sweetness of Iman in this life, my dear brothers and sisters, how can we expect to taste the sweetness of Iman in the hereafter? There is one verse in the Quran, in fact half of a verse. 
which summarizes every single thing that I have said today. Everything. And this half verse consists of five words. Five words succinctly summarize all of this. Allah Azza wa Jal says, Ala bi dhikrillahi tatuma innur qulub. Allah is a word that is used to draw attention. Pay attention, something important is about to follow. Bidikrillah, only through the remembrance of Allah. Tatuma innul qulub, will the hearts attain tranquility. Only through the remembrance of Allah, only through the worship of Allah, only by turning to Allah Azza wa Jal, will we face, will we attain, will we come to the destination that is eternally besought of all of mankind, that of happiness. Allah. بِذِكْرِ اللَّهِ تَطْمَئِنُّ الْقُلُوبِ